Hello, my name is Matthew, and the team and I are going to show you Shear Force's secret weapon to success. We don't just have four wheels, we have seven. One, two, three, four, five, the extra seven. three wheels are odometry pods. They're a key part of our autonomous routine. The odometry pods are dead wheels with encoders embedded in them that track the robot's position as we move across the field. Uh, in addition, they also track the angle, or the robot's heading, as we move or rotate on the field. Uh, we have three odometry pods. Um, we have two facing this way that track um, whether or not we're going this way or that way. Uh, one facing this way that tracks whether or not we go this way or that way. And then by figuring out how much more this wheel or that wheel has rotated, we can figure out um, how much the robot has turned. Over the past couple of years, we have been iterating over the odometry pods. This was the first odometry pod design. It was just a simple pod coder placed in a rocker. The next design is very similar. Uh, it's another pod encoder with a rocker, but um, one improvement we made on this design from the previous design is that we had larger springs on this design because the previous year we noticed that the accuracy of the pod was diminishing because the wheel was not making good contact with the floor. And then the most recent pod is this one on here. Uh, these pods are different from the other two because not only do they have stronger springs, but they retract completely into the robot. Uh, this was an important aspect of the center stage game because we had to go over some things. Um, but the most recent pod we have acquired is commercially made, and it looks like this. The uh, advantages of this pod are that it is extremely small, takes up an awful lot less space, and it retracts vertically. These pods, in combination with the Roadrunner software, uh, are what we use, uh, Shearforce uses to get its success. Roadrunner is an excellent resource that allows Shearforce to rapidly, precisely, uh, create complex autonomous routes. Roadrunner is excellent for keeping the robot on its true path even when it runs into obstacles and the obstacles throw the robot off course. For example, in state last year, our robot was merely doing its job. We were going to pick up a pixel and then another robot collided with us and threw us off course. But because we had Roadrunner, we were able to get right back on course and deliver the pixel. All of the Roadrunner motion planning library is available through Ryan Brott on GitHub. There has also been good documentation on the process of tuning Roadrunner. We'll have the documentation linked below as well. This tutorial will be most helpful if your robot has a mechanum drive and three dead wheels or odometry pods. So the first thing you're going to want to do is have a quick start project opened in Android Studio. We'll have a link in the description below. Make sure in your Mechanum Drive class that your four wheel motors are named the same as they are in your configuration file. Left front, left back, right back, right front. To reduce confusion, and your IMU is named IMU. In your three dead wheel localizer class, ensure that your odometry pods PAR0, PAR1, and PERP are named the same as they are in the driver station's configuration file. The assigned names in the code are the green words in the quotes. Next, make sure that you have set up your logo and USB direction for your IMU correctly in the Mechanum Drive class. Here's a photo for reference of IMU directions. Failure to input this information correctly will skew a lot of your graphs when you tune, especially your angular ramp graph. The first test we're going to run is the Mechanum Direction Debugger. This test will allow you to ensure your wheels are set in the correct direction. So they should all go forward. Yeah, go ahead, Aiden. Okay, X, Y, B, oh, it's also wrong. A, 
That was good. good. All right, so go back and do oh. the other two wrong ones. Okay. Why? Why? And B. Those are both wrong. In your Mechanum Drive class, you will find a line of code that will allow you to set the direction of your motors. For the motors that were spinning in the incorrect direction, either reverse or set the motor forward, doing the opposite of what was originally assigned to the motor. Here you'll see we set our wheels that were originally forward to reverse. One, here we go. X, Y, B, A. This test will check to see if your odometry pods are going the correct direction in the code. As you move the robot forward, the PAR0 and PAR1 should increase. And as you move the robot to the left, the perp should increase. This test allows you to determine the inches per tick that's your robot. After you're done with that, square the robot up to the field tile grid and push it forward slowly and straight to field tiles, which is the equivalent of 48 inches. Ensure that you record the ticks traveled in telemetry and without moving the robot, the forward distance traveled on the tiles in inches. The next test is the forward ramp logger test. This routine slowly increases the power forward given to the robot and measures the forward velocity over time to calculate a couple of velocity constants. Once your robot completes a forward ramp logger routine, you can then click the latest button on the forward ramp regression graph. Once you click the latest button, you should see a graph with a red line that indicates the line of best fit. Now there are, should be a light of there should be data points scattered all over the place, and ones that are really far scattered are called outliers. You can then highlight those outliers, and you can press the E key on your computer to eliminate them. Especially around the beginning, there are a lot of outliers, so it is best to eliminate those as many outliers as you can because. Outliers to eliminate your velocity constants uh, from getting from being accurate. Once you eliminate nearly all of the outliers from your graph, you should get some pretty accurate velocity constants. You can then copy those in your code, and you'll be good to go. The lateral ramp logger moves the robot to the left. The longer that you run the robot, the more data you will collect. Lateral ramp logger. <laughs> run the op mode. Once it's finished, go to the highlighted URL. Then click the latest button and then paste in your KS, KV, and inches per tick value into the boxes. Then click update.
The graph that's shown will have some outliers. To remove them, click E and then highlight the outliers that you wish to remove. Then, once you do that, copy and paste the lateral inches per tick value into your code. In this routine, the robot rotates in place. Come on. Angular ramp logger. Run the op mode and once it's finished, go to the highlighted URL. Paste in your KS and KV values into the boxes. Then click update. Click the update button. It will show four graphs, but you only need to use the first one. To remove any outliers, click E and highlight what you want to remove. Then, once you do that, copy the track width value into your code. The next routine is called the manual feed forward tuner. The purpose of this routine is to fine tune your KS and KV constants. Remember, these constants work initially calculated from your forward ramp logger test, and we're also going to add in a KA constant. Once you run your I mode and you have your graph pulled up, you should see two lines on your graph, a blue line and a red line. Your red line is your velocity reference, which is what your robot should be doing. Your blue line is actually your robot, so what you want to do is change your ka constant by a factor of 10 and try to match the blue line with the red line once the blue and red lines are as close together as they can be you can then copy your new ka constant and paste it into your code the manual feedback tuner routine drives back and forward using distance run the op mode and don't stop it all right go ahead in the manual feedback tuner test your robot should be driving back and forth on the field. On your computer, you should see two lines on a field. The one line should be where the robot should be, and the other line is where the robot measure its, measures itself to be. If your parameters for this test are really inaccurate, then your robot should be making a really, really awkward jarring motion as it goes back and forth. To solve this problem, you need to change one parameter at a time to a more accurate value. This will reduce the shakiness and awkwardness of your, uh, of your motion, thus making the robot have a clean, smooth motion going back and forth. All right, when it's heading back, go ahead and kick it. All right, come more over to like the center here and kick it again. So the main focus here is to ensure that the robot is following the spline trajectory accurately and smoothly. As we start the test, we need to look for any deviation in the path, such as if the robot wobbles, overshoots, or undershoots any turns. Ideally, we should see a smooth, continuous movement with no abrupt changes or short corrections. This has been Shearforce's guide as to how to calibrate Roadrunner to your specific robot. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. We'd love to answer them and collaborate with your team. Am I still recording? I bet you I'm still recording. I'm still recording. Oh, goodness.